Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 22nd, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. He's laughing at us. He is literally laughing at us, my friends. Okay, as you know, this Thursday at 4.15 p.m., the Cooner Man is going to be leading a major rally to impeach Judge Feely. It's going to be held at the J. Michael Ruain Judicial Building, the Salem Superior Court, on Federal Street in Salem, Mass., at 4.15, uh, Jeff Deal will be speaking, Re Representative Jim Lyons will be speaking, others will be speaking, but in particular, a person that is going to be beside me will be Lucy Kohler. Lucy Kohler lost her 29-year-old boy, Kyle, due to a fentanyl overdose. She has been in front of that courthouse Every day for the last week or so, protesting F.U. Feely and how he was able to release a convicted, known, admitted, notorious local heroin dealer, Manuel Soto Vitini, who was caught by police with over 40 small bags of heroin. A known uh, notorious heroin dealer that Salem police say is responsible for countless deaths and countless overdoses. Feely let him out without even a second in prison. Not even a second. And in his ruling, he openly praised him as a family man who had just committed a, quote, money crime because he was looking after the best interest of his family. He's a businessman. He's an entrepreneur. He's just trying to make a living. And another reason why he deliberately did not uh, put this man in jail, the prosecutor wanted at least two to three years, was because had he gone to jail, they would have revoked his green card and they would have sent him back to the Dominican Republic. This poor woman has been in front of the courthouse now almost every day. And I'm going to have her on the show on Thursday at 2.45. It's going to be the last segment before we head off for the rally at 4.15. I got off the phone with her, what was it, Brittany, maybe an hour and a half ago? I spoke to her. Let me tell you exactly what she told me. The poor woman is in tears. When she was recently at the courthouse, after Feely decided to free this, uh, this scumbag, this animal, okay? It, nobody else wants to call him that, I'll call him that. He's a heroin drug dealing animal. After Freely decides to free him, she was at the courthouse holding a picture of her dead son. One of Feely's staffers, I don't know if it's his clerk, I don't know who she was, walked up to her and said, how dare you protest Judge Feely? He is not just a good man, he is a great man. And then when Lucy Kohler said, well, you wouldn't think that if you lost your child, she then turned around and said to Lucy Kohler, so you guys are going to be holding a rally with a little uh, wink of the eye? Good luck with that. And she started to laugh in Lucy Kohler's face. Okay? They're laughing in our faces. Lucy Kohler, almost breaking down in tears, told me she was so sarcastic, so nasty. Jeff, these people think that they're God. They think they're so arrogant. They're so drunk with power and hubris. That when I'm there protesting, the fact that this is an out-of-control, arrogant judge, a corrupt judge, who has let loose cop killers, child rapists and molesters, he let, he let go a man who repeatedly raped and molested a 12-year-old girl. And then she says to me, this is the man that is releasing now a notorious heroin dealer that has been destroying our community and claimed the life of my boy.
and I'm asking for simple justice, and she laughs in my face because they think he's so untouchable. They're laughing at us. They're laughing at us. And not only are they laughing at us, a lot of Salem police officers are telling me, first of all, they can't stand this guy. And think about it from their point of view, really. What's the point of them doing their job? I mean, if I'm a Salem police officer, and here I am, I set up an elaborate sting operation. We know this guy, Sotto Vettini, is a known big-time drug dealer, heroin dealer, with his fancy black Volvo, and his swanky apartments, and his $2,000 suits, and his villa in the Dominican Republic, with the jewelry all over him and the, the bundles of cash. By the way, he's been dealing every, been dealing every day for years and years and years. They have been dying to take this guy off the streets. They set up this thing operation. They catch him giving selling heroin to a woman in a Honda Accord. They catch catch him with over 40 bags of heroin. By the way, also bags of cocaine, but let that go. In hidden secret compartments. He freaking pleads guilty. And then this judge, F you feely, blank you, I'm going to let him out on the streets. He won't even spend a day in prison because, God forbid, we should deport his rear end back to the Dominican Republic. Because he's a family man. He's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He's trying to provide for his family by peddling death and peddling poison. That's killing our kids. He's just he's a good man trying to make a living. This poor woman, I want you to think of the injustice. I really want you to think about it. Is there peacefully protesting holding her sign of her as uh, a sign in the picture of her dead boy saying this are the victims of Feely's drug dealers and his assistant or staffer whoever she is I'm, and his assistant or staffer whoever she is i'm going to track down her name i'm going to get her name walks up to her out of her way and and starts laughing in her face Feely is telling people that there's only 50 or 60 people that are going to show up at our rally on Thursday. The police in Salem are now concerned. I'm being very honest with you. They're saying this is now the situation. We did this drug operation, this sting operation. We put God knows how many hours of manpower and time into this. What's the point of us? We did this drug operation, this sting operation. We put God knows how many hours of manpower and time into this. What's the point of us arresting these heroin dealers when he's letting them out on the streets? We arrest them. He lets them out. We arrest them. God knows how many hours of manpower and time into this. What's the point of us arresting these heroin dealers when he's letting them out on the streets? We arrest them. He lets them out. We arrest them. He frees people of Massachusetts don't care. The people of Salem don't care. The victims don't care. The victims, his families don't care. Good luck with that rally. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Yeah, get your 50 people out on the sidewalk. You can't touch us. You can't touch us. My friends, it is time to teach this degenerate, buffoon, jerk, and clown of a joke. Okay? This guy is a joke of a judge. This clown, this absolute buffoon, that his days on the bench are numbered. It is time for us. I want to shame him in front of his colleagues. I want him to see with his good luck with that rally, wink, wink, how many people want him out. I want him to confront the mothers and fathers and parents of those who have lost loved ones. My friends, I want him to be removed from the bench. And I want to show it to the entire world that his days, professional days as a judge, are numbered. Are you with me? Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Judge Feely's got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Judge Feely's got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Judge F.U. Feely's got to go! Okay, my friends. He's laughing at us right now. But come this Thursday, the joke is going to be on him. 
Join me now, my friends. I'm begging you, uh, if you can, take half a day off or whatever. Leave work early. But please join me this Thursday, 4.15. Uh, it's going to be at the Federal Street in Salem, Massachusetts. Impeach Judge Feely Rally at the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building. I will be there. Jeff Deal will be there. A lot of other people are going to be there. I have parents who have lost loved ones due to heroin or opiate overdoses. They have been protesting this judge for a long time. They say they will be there. Now, people are worried. I've, by the way, this has almost never happened to me before. After my opening monologue that just ended, what was it, a couple minutes ago, people from AAF down the hall... And people from EI were coming into the booth, pumping their fists. People from Lynn, people from Salem, people from that entire area who are saying it is about time somebody is trying to rein in this out of control, despicable, corrupt judge. My friends, we can make history, but I need you to be there. It's time for Cooner Country to rise again. Jack in Situate. You're up next. Go ahead, Jack. Yes, Jeff. Uh, I want to get this guy out and uh, just to let you know that I am coming up from Situate to join you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank that's you. a high Jack. I mean, that's that's one hell of a trek, my friend. You want to know something? Uh, everybody talks about it, but nobody does something. So I feel like I won't be doing something if that makes any sense. It does. It makes perfect sense. And, Jack, I cannot thank you enough. Jack, when you come tomorrow, I want to take a picture with you. Is that okay? That's fine. I'd Jack be glad to. We, we, are, we already did a trip up there to uh, you know, do a drive run, so I almost know where I'm going. <laughs> good, good, good. Jack, thank you very much, and I really look forward to seeing you. God bless you, my friend. Now, there is going to be a lot of traffic. Look, it's Salem. It's 415. You can take the train. I'm not kidding. Like, right, Brittany, the train station is, I think, what, down the street or something, right? So it's, it's like, what, two minutes away? Five, ten minute walks. Okay, sorry, a five minute walk, a ten minute walk. Take public transportation, take the train. What we're going to do is we think he may try to flee through the back door. I'm going to have people posted in the back. And I want to get, if he tries to flee in the back, we're going to take pictures of him. And on camera, videotape him. So I want to, sh and we're going to put it up on RKO, and I'm going to blast it to the entire, not just state media, but the Fox News, to the national media as well. I want this guy to now become the poster child of the corrupt, arrogant judiciary that is slowly killing this country piece by piece. He's got to go, period. Susan in Tewksbury, you're up next. Go ahead, Susan. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Uh, do, do you think that uh, maybe he just might not show up for work <laughs> on that day? If he takes a day off, we'll have shamed him in front of his colleagues because we'll, well call him a coward. That's good. We'll uh, call I him mean, a coward. I, call, I called you. Uh, <laughs> uh, my my son. I I uh, still day to day uh, go with uh, my son, and my son also is out of that um, area, uh, Salem District. And I worked up there. My daughter works up there. It's, um, you would just see people passed out. I mean, just, it's, it's right by uh, Shetland Park there, and it's just, it's really, really bad. It's sad to see. But uh, as I told you before, I, I was like uh, thanking God that oh, my son's in jail for three months. He's got to live a three-month bowl. This is ridiculous. Uh, these people do actually laugh. As you say, they laugh. They do not care. They're still going to get their money. Oh, and if they are shamed, they are what? I There's got to be something that just they don't get any pension or anything. Because as you say, anyone could be a judge, correct? Yes. You're, you're a hack. Right. He's a hack. I could be a judge. I mean, anybody can be a judge. That, and that's the thing, Susan. It's, they're not judges anymore in the traditional sense. They're political hacks. This guy was appointed by Deval Patrick because he's a big Deval supporter. That's it. That's all. And well, so this there, incompetent there, there, there buffoon. Is no heart. There is no heart there at all. I can remember a time 
there was an incident, all right? It started out, it was the, oh, texting business. And it was, uh, there was a, a, a representative. He was ran off the road in Abidjan within a week, not even. It changed. And so we, we have to get out there and just change because they don't care. I've seen them in action. I lived in Lowell. I'm in Tewksbury. I even heard it. I was just with my neighbor, and I heard a young kid talking. And I don't know what he was talking about, but it was bags of something. I could make a lot of money, and I was, like, trying to... (laughs) No, I know. It's out of control. Susan, I so look forward to seeing you on Thursday, and thank I'm you so be much. There. I'm going to I have my broken leg and everything, but I'm going to be there. With your, bro- with your crutches. You're going to come with your crutches. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> God yes, bless yes. you. I, I'm going to put some signs on them. You know? <laughs> uh, yes. Make Salem much better. <laughs> <laughs> Make Salem. Make Salem great again. Make Massachusetts great again. Uh, look, my friends. We want to, after the rally, are going to hold a huge rally, God willing, if many of you show up. We are seriously then thinking about walking all the way down to City Hall afterwards, okay? Now, I'm telling you, I shouldn't even be saying this, but I'm going to say it. The police so can't stand this guy. I've been telling everybody, don't worry, we block traffic, it, it doesn't matter. They so can't stand this guy. That they want us to be there, the more the better, okay? If we shut Salem down, they don't care. They just want Feely gone. That's how much they can't stand this guy. You know my big fear is? Brittany and I have been talking about this. There are so many freaking drug addicts out, you know, once you get into the park in that area, and syringes and needles. I'm thinking, it is so bad. What if somebody, God forbid, I don't think it's going to happen, but walks and, I don't know, pricks themselves on a needle or gets hurt on a needle? It is so bad that to walk five minutes away to City Hall, I'm thinking, could be a risk for some of the people attending. And this guy is the reason why. Because he's letting heroin dealer after heroin dealer after heroin dealer out on the streets. So if we don't stop him now, my friends, I am telling you, I'm telling you this. And I said this to Grace. I know I got a break, Brittany, but I got to say this to you. Grace asked me last night, she said, you know, of course I back you, Jeff. But I mean, I don't understand. Why are you doing another rally? I said, I'll tell you why. And I pointed to Ashton and Ava. Somebody else is going to die because of this judge. Or another child's going to get raped. Or another person's going to die of a drug OD. Somebody's going to get killed because of this judge. And everybody thinks it won't be you. And I'm telling you, one day, it will be you. It's time for Feely to go. 617-266-6868 is the number. Yes, Angela Anderson is back. Okay, some GOP lawmakers want a second special counsel to look into the Department of Justice and the FBI. Angela Anderson in the WRKO newsroom has all those details. Angela, I love to hear the sound of your voice. It's great to have you back on. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Twelve thirty-eight here on the Great WRKO. Okay, this judge's arrogance knows no bounds. Spoke with Lucy Kohler just a couple of hours ago. You'll hear it. She'll say it publicly on this show. Uh, Thursday at about 2.45, 2.50. It'll be the last segment before we head off for the big uh, rally to remove Judge Feely from office. We're going to be holding it this Thursday, 4.15. It is going to be in front of the Michael J. Ruane building on Federal Street in Salem. That's where Judge Feely works. I'm hoping all of you can join us. Uh, if you're taking the train, it's very easy. It's about five minutes away, the actual train station. Uh, You get off right there. It's about a five-minute walk. It is the Salem stop on the commuter rail, the Rockport Newburyport line. So if you want to beat the traffic, maybe the best way actually is to take the train. Now, after I spoke with Lucy Kohler, I want to tell you exactly what she told me. She lost her son, Kyle, age 29, from a fentanyl overdose. 
She could not believe that Judge Feely let that heroin dealer out without a second in jail. She decided to bring a po- picture of, uh, of her son uh, and a sign to protest Feely. One of Feely's staffers, and I want to find out who she is, went out of her way, walked up to her, and said, how dare you protest Judge Feely? He is a good, decent man. In fact, she called him a great man. And then laughed in her face about the rally. As when Lucy Kohler said, well, you wouldn't be saying that if that was your child that was dead. And that's why we're going to be holding a rally. Her response was, yeah, right, with a wink, sarcastically, good luck with that rally, laughing and then walking away. They're now laughing in our faces. That's how arrogant this judge is. And I want to give a big hat tip to many people. Uh, Dan Ray has also been leading this charge on his show at night on WBZ. I know how he's been on this story as well. I want to give a hat tip to Dave Copeland. Listen to this. He's got a story out uh, in the patch, patch patch.com, the controversial decisions of Salem Judge Timothy Feely. I don't want to get into all of them because I don't want to They'll take up the whole show. You know about the heroin dealer. You know about Daniel Bove. I talked about him, who was accused repeatedly since 2000, since 2000, going back 18 years, of repeated sex crimes, accused of molesting and repeatedly raping a 12-year-old girl. Feely let him walk and and said he could, in fact, do home. He was in the home renovation business. He could do home renovation projects anywhere he wanted, even if there were children at the house. Now, listen to this. Gets worse. But this guy gets worse. He released John Williams, who was arrested on 80, almost 80 serious gun charges. He let him loose. A month later, he killed Corporal Eugene Cole in Maine, stole his vehicle, and then robbed another store. The prosecutors could not believe that he allowed Williams to walk the streets. Cole is dead. His family is now grieving. They say they are shattered forever. Listen to this, though. Dave Copeland's got it all, okay? Here, listen to this one. Ian Kessel and Dalvin Andini, or Andino, forgive me. Ian Kessel and Dalvin Andino. They were arrested on multiple charges of robbery. The two men violated the conditions of their release. And yet, over prosecutors' objectives, he let Kessel off for a simple $5,000 bail, okay, bond, bail, and Andini was released on $10,000 bail. So he's letting criminals out, essentially, for a song. But it gets worse. Hold on to this. There was the state trooper, Timothy Downs. Sorry, Thomas Downs. State trooper, Thomas Downs. Downs was convicted in 2015 of beating up and assaulting his ex-girlfriend in Salisbury. So he was convicted. He beat the living daylights out of her, okay? The guy's a, a woman beater. To me, there's nothing lower than that. But let that go. Feely reduced down sentence to two years probation. He didn't even serve a freaking minute in jail for beating the living daylights out of his own ex-girlfriend, beating her black and blue. And all he did was he ordered him to complete a batterer's intervention program, essentially take anger management classes. That's what it is. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Oh, and undergo a substance abuse evaluation because the guy was on drugs. You know, oh, wow. Ooh, ooh, Timmy. Ooh, Tim. Hey, F you, Feely. Take it easy now. Don't be so tough on these people. Jaim Ford. Two bail hearings for him. Charged in an 80 count indictment for allegedly running a scheme of massively defrauding people with his contracting business. Charges in the indictment included, he was literally being a common and notorious thief, he was stealing, identity fraud, larceny, forgery, he was shafting his workers, workers' compensation fraud, insurance fraud. In fact, he was even polluting the environment. I thought the leftists cared about the environment, not this crook. Not this crook. 
Feely, listen to this. The um, initially, his bail was set at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Judge Feely said he can't pay seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He reduced it to seven thousand five hundred dollars. When the prosecutors found out that he paid out of the stolen money that he the money had stolen for the seven thousand five hundred, they demanded at a second bail hearing. Okay, set bail at two hundred and fifty thousand. Feely said, "No, no, blank you." He reduced it to fifteen thousand dollars, and the guy walks free like a bird. Now, I want to know something very obvious. No one else has the guts to say it on the air. I'm going to say it. Is this judge on the take? Because I'm looking at heroin dealers. I'm looking at cop killers. I'm looking at burglars. I'm looking at people or uh, con men. I'm looking, you name it. I'm looking at the, 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 the criminal of the criminals in our society are going in front of this judge. And their bails are being reduced dramatically, and they're basically being released without serving a day or a moment in prison. And a lot of money is exchanging hands. I don't just want him removed. It is time to investigate Judge Feely. I want to look at his bank records. I want to look at his financial statements. I want to see what's going on with this judge, because something doesn't smell right. And I want to say one final thing. I want you to think of this. You just lost your son. Your son. I have a son. Okay, he's eight. And I said this to Lucy. I said, you know, Lucy, I know what Kyle was like. You don't have to even tell me. My boy is eight. I bet he played outside with other kids. She said, yes. I bet he loved the Red Sox like my boy does. Yes. I bet he liked to play with animals and insects. Yes. And you see him when he's eight, innocent, the whole world in front of him. And that's what stays in your mind. That innocent boy that you gave life to, that you gave birth to, that you took care of. You're the mother. And because your son, I don't know, gets a bad back, gets addicted to opiates, has an injury, God forbid, goes to high school or college, gets in with the wrong crowd, and they start introducing him to this highly addictive poison. And 20 years later, He's not the boy that you knew. It's almost like the devil has possessed him. And your last days with him are him with his liver failing, his heart failing, his lungs failing, his brain damaged. This drug has consumed and destroyed him. And this, forgive me, this blanken judge praises the heroin dealer. Praises the drug dealers. And when you stand there asking for justice for your boy, he sends one of his minions to walk up to you and laugh in your face and say, good luck with that rally. Ha 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 ha. Nobody can touch me. My friends, this is not liberal. This is not conservative. This is not Republican. This is not Democrat. This is human. This is human. I'm talking now as a human being. This is basic civilized decency. This judge needs to be impeached, and he needs to be impeached now. Cooner country, it's time for us to rise again. Please join me this Thursday, and let's send this judge a message and his arrogant, corrupt cronies a message they will never forget. WRKO. John in Boston. You're up next. Thanks for holding, John, and welcome. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Yeah, so uh, when you when you said that they, he thinks there's only going to be 50 people there, I said, I'm definitely going. And I am on crutches. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding at all. You know, that really pushed me over and made me uh, definitely going to be there because this guy thinks that there's only going to be 50 people or whatever. Yeah, that's what he's that's what he's telling the cops in Salem. He's laughing, saying, yeah, yeah, big rally. 50 people are going to show up. 
Well, that made me want to go even more. And um, and I've been uh, sober and clean three years now. God bless you, John. And I'm not, uh, per se, I'm not a heroin addict, but I am an addict. And um, I'm not responsible for my disease. I am responsible for my recovery, though. John, so you've been clean and sober now for the last three years? Yes, sir. Beautiful. John, just stay clean and sober and the whole world's in front of you, my friend. All right, man. John, I look forward to meeting you. I will meet you. I want to shake your hand and take a picture with you. Okay, John? Thank you so much for coming. I really, honestly, I know it's hard. It's the middle of the day almost. It's 4.15. A lot of you got kids to pick up. You've got work. This will make a tremendous statement. And we're going to do it where Feely works, the hours that he's supposed to be ending his day, and in front of his colleagues. There is nothing more humiliating there is nothing more that is damning than to see him be exposed like this in front of his colleagues. And maybe, just maybe, we're going to wipe that arrogant smirk off of his face and that of his staff. 617-266-6868. John in Somerville. You're up next. Go ahead, John. Hello, Jeff. I want to make two quick points. Yes. The second one will be about the judge. The first one is more important. Tomorrow, the legislature will be taking up the red flag gun bill, which is a gun confiscation bill. I'm very concerned and disturbed. You're not talking about this, Jeff. You're more concerned with the drug addicts than our constitutional rights. I don't hear Jeff Deal speaking about this. Well, uh, why haven't you mentioned this, Jeff? Uh, John, we, should be uh, at the, uh, we should be at the state house stopping this bill, Jeff. John, I'll be honest with you. This is the first I've heard of it. It's not a conspiracy, John. I mean, you know, I'm very pro Second Amendment, and I will definitely look into that story. I promise. Um, and please, what's your second point, John? Go ahead. Just simply saying, every time we speak about gun rights, everything you're saying is a lie, and so is Jeff Deal. And let's get talk about the judge for a minute. There's a very good reason the judge let this guy go. The jails are overflowing. There's no room for the bad criminals. I don't, I don't think he did the wrong thing. I am telling you that the crime rate is out of control, and there's no room for the serious criminals. And I think you should have the judge come on the show and give his opinion. Oh, he's a, he's a coward. He won't come on. I've invited him multiple times. He's a coward. He won't come on. That's number one. Number two, in fact, he's running from me, and he's running from anybody who challenges him. Number one. Number two, uh, a heroin dealer? I don't know what's more serious than that. So honestly, buddy, I don't know if your head's right. I mean, really, I don't know if the elevator goes to the top with you. But, you know, we're not talking about, you know, prosecuting people for a little bit of pot or marijuana. Okay, I'm talking about hardcore heroin that is killing 60,000 Americans a year, 2,000 in Massachusetts alone. And you're telling me this judge did the right thing? Are you freaking kidding me? So how about when he let out the other guy on the serious gun charges who ended up killing a cop? He did the right thing then? How about the guy that raped that 12-year-old girl? He did that. That was the right thing again? I mean, it's, it's pathetic. And you're like, you know, how does judge come on and give his side of the story? I will give him all the time in the world. That corrupt loser has no guts to come on my show. I, I've asked him repeatedly to come on my show. He cannot defend the indefensible. That's why we're rallying. 617-266-6868. Arthur in Chestnut Hill. You're up next. Go ahead, Arthur. They've been laughing at us for a long time uh, in this state, and the reason is is because nobody runs for office, and they and they and uh, they just control the whole uh, state, the whole legislature, and we need to run for office. That said, I have my own story with a woman that worked for me for many years who had a who had a who had a son, and unfortunately, you know, he was hooked for seventeen years, and then and then he died. Every day, every year on the date of his death, uh, she broke down and cried and had to go home. She just and it, it was awful to watch. And you can imagine what her what she must have gone through, because with with uh, kids, and then they become adults. You know, I've had it myself. You're helpless. You you there's, there's there's nothing you can do but watch someone you love turn into somebody you don't know anymore, and 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 the, and the system makes them worse. She knew so much about the places that he that he went to, and this guy Jeff, he had a beautiful wife and two beautiful uh, young daughters, twins. And at his wake, the the funeral parlor was 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 lines for a mile long every single night for five nights. 
So you stop and think that all the support and love and all the friendship and all everybody that was and, and the family that he had, and he still couldn't lick it. Uh, I know, Arthur. I know. And and that this judge is laughing in our face and letting these people loose on the streets. He said he, 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 there's a special place in hell for a guy like him. I agree with you, Arthur. Arthur, very good call as always. Thank you so much. Okay, my friends, the rally is going to be this Thursday, 415, at the, um, it's going to be the Impeach Judge Feely rally at the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building. That's where this Judge Feely works, F.U. Feely. It is on Federal Street in Salem, Mass. It will start at 415. Please, if you can, come for everybody, for your children, for the parents of those who have died, uh, for Lucy Kohler, for her son. You can also take the train. It's the Salem stop on the commuter rail, the Rockport, Newburyport line. Okay, my friends, Angela is in the newsroom with the absolute latest on what's going on. Take it away, Angela.